respected brothers and sisters all of us have rituals we have certain habits everybody wakes up in the morning and likes to do something first whether it's take a shower have your breakfast brush your teeth and people have different orders for all of this some people like to have like coffee first um, before anything else it's like without that the day doesn't start and things begin sometimes in emulation of someone else maybe the first time you had that coffee in the morning it was because you saw someone else do it or somebody said to you oh you know try a cup of coffee in the morning well you saw your parents do it and then you started doing it and then before you know it it's habit right it's you wake up in the morning and that's the first thing you think about you wake up in the morning the first thing you think about is your shower you wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is I don't know, your morning jog, if you've got a habit like that, all right? Um, and like that, we have rituals, we have things that we do almost instinctively, unfailingly, because they have become our habits and our rituals. <clears throat> what does our deen require of us? in terms of habits and rituals okay um, what what are what are good habits how does a muslim start his day how does a muslim uh, what is the first thing that a muslim is supposed to do when he wake up when when he wakes up and if we're not doing that then how do we turn it into habit i think that's a really really important question the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us <clears throat> um, uh, in a hadith. He said, uh, he told us to 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 be balanced and moderate in things, and remember that our actions alone will not take us to paradise. So he said, "Saddidu wa qaribu wa alamu an." لَنْ يُدْخِلَ أَحَدَكُمْ عَمَلُهُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَنْ أَحَبَّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلْ um, It's a Sahih Hadith in, in Bukhari. The, the Aisha رضي الله عنه narrates that the Prophet said be, be, moderate, be moderate and be balanced. Right? Um, do things in moderacy. Remember that your amal, your deeds alone cannot take you to paradise. So therefore, remember that the most beloved of deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the consistent ones, even if they may be less, but they are consistent. And actions that are consistent are actions that are habitual. Right? If you can, you're only consistent because you've turned, you've turned something into habit. And it, it's so habitual that you do it. It's, it's, it's second nature. It, it, it just comes to you without even thinking. Um, if those habits, so th those habits could be, you know, people have all sorts of habits. Some, you know, kind of are ugly and weird and unsightly and disgusting, right? And other people have, have really, really good habits. But there are habits that will take us to Jannah. And those habits, and those things are not necessarily like extreme amounts of exertion at a particular time um, in order to achieve something. It may, not, it may not be, it may be that something that we do habitually every single day in our lives is more valuable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than exerting ourselves physically, mentally and emotionally in the month of Ramadan to try to, to, try to make the most out of that time. I'm, 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 and I'm not making that, co that, that comparison to undermine that, meaning that we've got to do that in Ramadan anyway. But it may be that in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something that is not particularly exerted, uh, exerting, not particularly difficult, but is a consistent habitual practice is more beloved to him. 
So a Muslim wakes up in the morning and as habit says La ilaha illallah and as habit recites Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa akhtilafi al-layli wal nahari la ayati li'uli al-bab those verses as is taught in the sunnah and as habit reads um, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyani ba'dama amatani wa ilayhi al-nushur or something like that right the, the various ad'iyah that's the first thing he does and it's habit it, it, it doesn't it, it's, it's never missed because he has taken care to turn it into a habit right like that cup of coffee but for this person the cup of coffee comes after the early morning jog comes after the shower comes after but he wakes up first thing rubs his eyes and he reads that and gets up prays his fajr right those habits get us to paradise those habits get us to paradise and then and the thing about the Prophet ﷺ saying that the Prophet ﷺ saying be moderate is because when things are done habitually they never seem like an extreme amount of work. You see the habits of pious people and you'll see that at the first thing in the morning they prayed their fajr etc etc and there is a habit to just stay seated afterwards and they'll read some Quran and so on. And just like us they go to work. And just like us, they come back. And just like us, maybe they run businesses. And just like us, maybe they have an executive job or, 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 or something stressful goes on in their lives. But they have these habits. And those habits make sh keep them spiritually enlightened, fulfilled, help them process the difficulties of life properly. But most importantly, they rack up thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of hasanat in their book of deeds on the day of judgment they're the ones that matter in the end really they weren't specific acts of huge amounts of exertion but they were good habits that they had established in their daily lives walking out every single day seeking the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min an adilla aw dalla aw azilla aw zal aw adlima aw utlam aw yushala aw yushala aw ajhala aw ajhala aw yushala alayya dua bismillah wa tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah every time we get in the car even if I'm on the phone the habit kicks in subhana alladhi sakharana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqrinin wa inna ila rabbina la muqalibun we've trained ourselves to respond to the adhan habitually if it's salah time immediately We've built the habit in so much that our body clock is programmed to start creating some sort of agitation, some sort of inbuilt reminder because it's Dhuhr time, because it's Fajr time. We can't stay asleep because it's five years of habit, 10 years of habit, 20 years of habit. And we've built those things in. We know that I have to get to bed by a particular time because the thought of missing Fajr is unthinkable. So therefore the question of going to bed at a particular time because the, the consequence of not doing that could be to miss Fajr is unthinkable. So therefore, there is a habit of going to bed at a particular time, in winter a particular time, in summer. There are these rituals that are built around our ibadah, around things that accrue thawab for the akhirah. Right? That's what we have to uh, work on. Bilal radiallahu anhu um, had the habit of um, uh, of forgiving people um, before he went to bed every night and so the Prophet Sallallahu heard his footsteps in Jannah. Prophet Sallallahu he heard his footsteps in sorry Bilal radiallahu anhu had the habit of always keeping wudu and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard his footsteps in uh, in Jannah. And similarly, there are these, these adat, these habits. So w what are yours and what are mine? Okay? If we don't have them, then every single good deed is a struggle. Every prayer is a struggle. Every nafal is a struggle. Every dhikr is like, what was it that, what, what was it that I'm meant to say at this time? Right? So one of the things, easy good deeds are building good habits in the domain of worship and we can then expand and we can talk about good habits in terms of our character in terms of how we talk and how we behave and so on and so forth but we, we begin here basic um, basic habits our rituals 
and people have them you'll see that a lot of people if, if they're successful in life you'll find that there are things that they do in a particular way all right the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us success the, the the recipes of success in the akhirah because he taught us things that are meant to be uh, habitual this is why uh, based on the hadith ulama have written books on amalul yawm wal layla like deeds of the day deeds of the night the prophet sallallahu has taught us say this in the morning <coughs> say this at night after every single salah say allahu akbar allahumma anta salam wa minka salam wa ilayk ya ya'udu salam tabarak ya al jalali wal ikram allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa ihsanika bihadik atul kursi these are all habits right if they become habits then even as an ordinary person you start to understand what it means to remember Allah abundantly you start to understand um, how, it is, how is it possible that the Prophet could be described as remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment because th there's an authentic hadith in which uh, Aisha radiallahu anha describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر الله على كل حين that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi used to remember Allah in every moment ala kulli heen, in every moment how is that possible? well build good habits and you'll, you'll realize that a significant amount of the time almost, almost unconsciously is spent remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala even for an ordinary person like you and me why? just good habits nothing more to it right? and that's what we need to work on and that's what we need to you know, like teach ch you know, children are brilliant at picking up good habits, right? Whether it's saying Bismillah with everything, like when they eat, and the contrast as well. Like you, you, you come across children; they'll never say Bismillah when they eat, and you come across other children; they will never ever forget. What's the difference? Right? The difference is one's been taught, the other. One's been taught and there's a, there's, there's a role model. Meaning they've been taught and they get to hear the adults around them do it. So it, it becomes ingrained. So they grow up with those habits. The other, my, I'm sure everybody's been taught. Who hasn't been taught? Which child hasn't been taught that you're supposed to say Bismillah before you eat? You're supposed to say Alhamdulillah after you eat. Everybody's been taught it. Why isn't the habit there? Because there's no role models. So good habits, therefore, are things that if we can develop in ourselves, they are inherited from us we actually end up passing them down, right? Like, you know, alhamdulillah, in, in my childhood, I learned the majority of du'as and many, many surahs because of the good habits of my father. So, like I remember clearly learning Sabbih Isma Rabbika Al-A'la because some of his prayers, he would pray at home and he had a habit. When he prayed at home on his own, he would either pray in jama'ah with the family and even if he didn't, he would recite his surahs out loud. And before I knew it, I knew a surah. It's quite a long surah, right? Sabbih ismi rabbika al-a'la for a six, seven-year-old. But I knew off by heart just from seeing a good habit, right? So if somebody insists on the habit of, of drinking with the right hand, do you understand? It will be observed and it will be learned by children and by those around them. So habits are actually inspirational. They're inspirational. They inspire others to emulate. Most importantly, they inspire our children. So actually, what we would have done, if we established good habits in ourselves, what we would have done is pretty much put our children almost subconsciously onto the path to Jannah. Because we would have guaranteed millions and millions of hasanat in their book of deeds, millions of hasanat in their book of deeds because they've learned good habits just by observing us. So there is a legacy issue here. That we, may, we develop good habits and we leave behind a legacy of them because our children develop those good habits. And eventually they become tradition. That's how sometimes, you know, sometimes families have tradition. The traditions come, if they're good traditions, they start off with someone's good habits. Then they get passed down and eventually there's one person it gets passed down and it moves laterally then passed down again there's more lateral motion more people picking it up and before you know it, it becomes 
It becomes tradition. It becomes family tradition. Why? Because somebody had a good habit. The same thing is true of bad habits. Same thing is true of bad habits. You have sins, sins that become family tradition. Sins become family tradition, right? Why? Because somebody starts, somebody had a bad habit. That became legacy, got passed down. That moved laterally to other members of the family. Before you know it, people start celebrating it. It never even occurs to them that it's a sin. But they do it anyway. Why? Because it's just, it's just habit. It's become habit. Whether it's not realizing that family members are violating the rules of hijab among one another. Right? Because it's okay. Because messing around with the bubby is fine. It's tradition. Because sister-in-law's missing about with brother-in-law's is tradition. So it's alright. But where does it start from? It starts from habits. So the opposite is true. So inshallah, really what I wanted to address, this is, I, I've just come back from Umrah, so it, it, this was actually bothering me and it was kind of, I was thinking about this a lot while over there because while you're in Ramadan, going to Umrah, place, things like that, you tend to intensify your a'mal. So you suddenly see yourselves, you see yourself kind of trying to do everything and then you reflect on why you don't continue to do it later on. And what's missing is the habit's missing. You've not invested in turning it into habit. If you turn it into habit, it means that you will, you will do what needs to be. Everybody really has all of the logical tools in order to work out what I need to do to make something a habit. Right? So if you have several things that, you've, that you want to read, then you'll put them together and memorize them so that you can, so that your habit is fed. Right? You'll put it together, you'll memorize them because you know, I, I want this good habit. You're never going to forget those verses that I mentioned earlier on, right? And they're in any dua book, you won't, you'll never mention, you'll never forget those duas. You'll never think, I've forgotten the dua because it's not something that you want to do as a one-off, but rather something that you do as a habit. You know, you'll never forget. If there's any surah you'll never forget, it's surah mulk and surah sajda. Why? Because you've, it's become habit to recite it every single night. You'll never forget, you know, uh, surah al-ikhlas and, uh, and uh, falaq al-nas, partly because we like to recite them a bit too much in salah sometimes and not recite any other verses, but partly because you'll recite them every single night before you go to bed as habit. Now, I don't know what your habits are. I don't know to what extent you're doing them. But it's something to think about. What are, what are our good habits? And, and therefore, if we don't have them, then we're missing out on arguably volumes of hasanat that compete with the amount of hasanat we get in Ramadan, in uh, Umrah, and in Hajj, and these amazing times, right? And only because, we miss out only because we just don't have very, very simple, very, very basic, sometimes very small habits. And therefore, just the word Bismillah is missing from something. So now that act of work, that, that doesn't become an act of worship. It, there's no barakah in it. We don't get the hasanat for taking those words. The word Subhanallah is missing. The word Alhamdulillah is missing. I mean, it's like, it's as light as a breath. It's that small, but it's a tree in Jannah, right? It's an immense amount of reward. The one regret that a person in Jannah will have on the Day of Judgment, according to Hadith, the one regret, I'll finish with this, the one regret a person will have in Jannah, after having gone into Jannah, will be the moments in life that they spent without remembering Allah. Because they realize how much they got just by saying Subhanallah. So they, they regret the idle moments where they just sat there and didn't say something. Just didn't say some words of remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us good habits inshallah.